notice Internet of Things and Electronic Solutions. We support you to develop your knowledge and make you familiar with the latest technology and gadgets. Pulse with Modulation OPWM, is a technique for changing the on and off time of digital signal to encode data in it. Also, you can use PWM to convert digital signal into analog signal. Before going into details about PWM, first we need to familiar with some terms related to any analog or digital signal. Frequency of a signal Frequency of any signal is number of complete cycles done by that particular signal for unit period of time. Basically, this period is equal to 1 second. As you can see in the figure, you can identify a complete cycle by considering the pattern repeated throughout the entire wave. Okay, we think that you are okay with frequency of signal. So, let's see what is period. Period of a signal is the time duration which will it take to complete one single cycle. Also, you can find the time period by taking the reciprocal of frequency if the frequency is given in hertz. Next term is amplitude. Amplitude of a signal is the maximum distance of oscillation from the center or in digital signals the maximum voltage from the zero level. Now we are familiar with some terms related to signals so we can go deep into PWM. First, a digital signal or a square wave is created by switching on and off a voltage between zero and maximum level. We can use an oscillator or a frequency generator to do this. Duration of on time of the signal is called the pulse width. By changing the on time or the pulse width in between zero and period of the square wave, you can encode data in the signal pattern. As an example, you can select particular time period as the threshold time and if the pulse width of the signal is greater than the threshold time, you can assign one task, let's say switching on an LED. If the pulse width of the signal is lower than the threshold time, you can assign a different task or here switching off the LED. So by changing the pulse width of the signal, Without changing the frequency of the signal, we can assign different states or tasks. This is how we are going to encode data using PWM. Now let's see how we can get an analog signal using pulse width modulation. Here also, you have to change the pulse width of the signal. So you will get discontinuous on and off voltage at the output. But as you know, Analog signal is a continuously varying DC signal. So how this PWM is going to give us an analog signal? It's easy. If you can get the average voltage of the digital signal, which means the integration of the signal over time period, you can get a specific voltage level for each and every pulse width. If the pulse width is low, the output average voltage is also low. If the pulse width is high, then the output average voltage is high. You can clearly see this by connecting a capacitor at the output. During the on time of the signal, the capacitor will get charged. And during the off time of the signal, the capacitor will give the required voltage to the output by discharging it. So, you won't see any discontinuity of the output signal, which means an analog signal. Okay, now it's time to do a practical example using well-known microcontroller board called Arduino. You also can use the example codes given in the Arduino IDE to do this practical. To get varying analog values, you should change the pulse width of the on and off time. If you repeat this on-off pattern fast enough with an LED, for example, the brightness of the LED will change 
proving that the PWM is giving an analog voltage to the LED. Call to analog write function in Arduino IDE is on a scale of 0 to 255, such that analog write 255 requests a 100% duty cycle or always on. Analog write 127 is a 50% duty cycle. So half of the period output is high and the other half of the period the output is low. Analog write 0 will gives you no voltage during the time. So it is basically switch off. The frequency of the square wave does need to be sufficiently high enough when controlling LEDs to get the proper dimming effect. Otherwise, if the frequency of the PWM signal is so much low, you will see a flickering of the LED due to on-off states of the PWM other than having a smooth brightness control. You can also use pulse width modulation to control the angle of servo motor or to construct switch mode power supplies, control the speed of DC motor and to do many more things. But in this video, we are not going to discuss all those examples. But for sure, we'll be adding more video tutorials about PWM in future, explaining all uses of PWM and different ways of generating PWM signals using different boards other than Arduino or Uno. If you feel that you learned something from this video, please like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel. If you have any doubt further, you can comment in the comment section below.